On the eve of the 92nd Indian Air Force Day, Air Chief Marshal Amar Preet Singh declared, by 2047, we envision an Indian Air Force that operates with a fully indigenous inventory. He emphasized that this ambitious vision aligns with India's Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative and goes beyond merely replacing imported platforms. Singh noted, we need homegrown technologies to tackle the evolving challenges of modern aerial warfare and stress the importance of collaboration with Indian industry and research institutions. He highlighted that the Tejas light combat aircraft is already a testament to India's aerospace capabilities. The upcoming AMCA will be a cornerstone of our indigenous future, he added confirming close cooperation with the Defense Research and Development Organization and private partners to ensure its timely development. Singh outlined that the IF is prioritizing indigenous advancements across all domains, with the Astra Bivaram already in service and advanced variants in the works. We're also rapidly developing indigenous radar systems, air defense systems and electronic warfare platforms, he said. Acknowledging challenges such as sustaining R&D investment and global supply chain disruptions, Singh expressed confidence in India's defense industry. We have a growing synergy between the public and private sectors, he stated. This announcement reflects India's determination to assert its aerospace prowess, signaling its ambition to become a significant player in the global defense industry. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited has successfully manufactured and delivered the first AL-31FP engine for the Indian Air Force's Su-30 MKI fighter jets, marking a significant milestone under a new contract for 240 engines. This initial engine, produced at the Sukhoi Engine Division plant in Odisha, was handed over to the Air Force as confirmed by reports. The contract, valued at $3.1 billion, was finalized on September 9, 2024, with an eight-year timeline for full production. The Indian Ministry of Defense highlighted this achievement as a demonstration of HAL's capabilities in aircraft engine production and its commitment to enhancing the Indian Air Force with advanced technology. They noted that the Sukhoi Engine Division has adopted modern technologies and developed infrastructure that meets global standards. To meet the Air Force's requirements, a total of 950 new engines are necessary for the Su-30 MKI fleet. The modernization effort, which includes upgrading these fighters with Russian-licensed engines, aims to elevate them to fifth-generation standards and extend their operational life to 2055. This upgrade will also provide the jets with the latest radars, avionics, integrated drone systems and long-range weaponry, including Astra air-to-air missiles with a range of 350 kilometers. The production of the first license-built engine is viewed as a significant accomplishment for Indian industry, possibly setting the stage for an ambitious deal involving new fighters for India. Negotiations between Russia and India are reportedly underway to increase the licensed production of Su-30 MKI fighters by an additional 50 units. Russia and India are discussing upgrading India's Su-30 MKI to Russia's Su-30 SM-2 standard, potentially improving performance and combat capabilities. The agreement, signed in 2000, has grown to over 260 fighters, with over half of the components manufactured in India. Russia encourages India to join joint projects for global market expansion. India's indigenous fighter jet program has gained momentum with the announcement from Air Chief Marshal Amar Preet Singh, the newly appointed chief of the air staff, regarding a timeline for the Tejas MK-2. During a press briefing, he confirmed that the inaugural flight of the Tejas MK-2 is set for next year, with the research and development phase expected to conclude by December 2027. The Indian Air Force anticipates inducting the first units of this advanced fighter jet by 2028. This announcement was received positively by the IAF, which has committed to acquiring at least 120 Tejas MK-2 aircraft. The MK-2 is intended to modernize the IAF's combat fleet, replacing aging aircraft and significantly enhancing India's air power capabilities. Air Chief Marshal Singh stated that at least 120 LCA Mark II planes have been planned for procurement. The Tejas MK-2, a successor to the Tejas MK-1, boasts enhanced range, increased payload capacity, and advanced avionics, highlighting the advantages of indigenous development. Singh acknowledged past delays in the Tejas MK-1 program and highlighted the need to learn from them and address challenges in technology transfer from design to production. In a notable shift, the CAS called for increased private sector involvement in defense production, 
stating that reliance on a single agency is no longer feasible. He acknowledged the limitations of HAL in meeting demands within specific timeframes and advocated for private industry to contribute significantly. This call for collaboration aligns with the Aeronautical Development Agency's recent expression of interest, inviting private companies to participate in producing structural components for the Tejas MK2. The EOI aims to enhance manufacturing capabilities for critical components such as fuselage sections, wings, tails, and canards, thereby accelerating production timelines. Air Chief Marshal Singh's vision for the Tejas MK2 program, coupled with his emphasis on collaboration between HAL and the private sector, signals a transformative era in Indian defense production. With a defined timeline and a commitment to learning from past challenges, the IAF is poised to achieve its goal of a modernized, indigenously produced combat fleet, significantly contributing to India's Atmanirbhar Bharat vision. The French defense conglomerate Safran Group has expressed its willingness to establish its first defense electronics unit outside France and India, signaling a deepening strategic relationship between the two countries, according to sources familiar with the discussions. During a two-day strategic dialogue involving India's national security advisor Ajit Doval, French President Emmanuel Macron's diplomatic advisor Emmanuel Bonn, and military advisor Fabian Mandan, France agreed to collaborate with India on advanced materials and metallurgy which are essential for manufacturing critical parts of military and civilian engines. Sources indicated that for India to effectively absorb high-end technology, it is vital for the Indian industry to gain expertise in advanced metallurgy for forging and casting key aircraft engine components. Safran announced plans to set up a defense electronics facility in India to produce sensors and vital electronic components necessary for military platforms, although the exact location for this facility remains undecided. Additionally, French aircraft manufacturer Dassault Aviation SA has already secured land for a maintenance, overhaul and repair facility in Javar, Uttar Pradesh, to service Rafale fighters and civilian aircraft. France has also committed to jointly developing unmanned subsurface, surface and aerial systems with India, as well as supporting advancements in counterswarm and armed drone technologies. The dialogue included discussions on sensitive security matters, covering topics like cybersecurity and military applications in space including joint military satellite launches and the co-development of standoff weapons like the hammer missile. A key highlight of Doval's visit was a lengthy meeting with Macron, focusing on the Ukraine war and Israel's military operations in Lebanon. They exchanged assessments on these issues, with a shared understanding that Israel would likely continue its operations against Hezbollah to weaken the group while supporting a moderate government in Lebanon. The discussions also touched on the broader global security environment, particularly regarding China's posture in the Indo-Pacific region. Air Chief Marshal A.P. Singh, the newly appointed Chief of Air Staff, stated that India's Air Force IAF has superior air defense systems to Israel's Iron Dome, but emphasized the need to increase these systems to counter large-scale missile attacks. India's Air Chief Marshal Singh dismissed concerns about its preparedness for saturation attacks, stating that the current inventory is insufficient and that the IAF needs more interceptor missiles to neutralize complex assaults, highlighting the imminent induction of the Akash NG missile system. The next-generation Akash missile variant is noted for its extended range, improved accuracy, and enhanced capabilities to engage modern aircraft, drones, and cruise missiles. Air Chief Marshal Singh confirmed that a substantial number of Akash missiles have been inducted into service and that attention is now turning to the Akash NG. This development reflects India's commitment to self-reliance in defense technology. The country has been actively working on advancing its missile defense systems, including the Akash, Akash-NG, and the Sophisticated Ballistic Missile Defense, BMD Shield. These systems are specifically designed to counter a wide range of threats, including saturation attacks, underscoring India's efforts to bolster its defense capabilities. The Akash missile system, a medium-range surface-to-air missile, is a key component of India's air defense architecture. It can engage multiple targets simultaneously. The Akash NG is expected to further enhance these capabilities with its improved range and precision. India's BMD shield intercepts ballistic missiles both inside and outside the Earth's atmosphere. This system is crucial for defending against potential ballistic missile threats from neighboring countries. That's all from YKS team for now. If you like the information, then please do share and give a like.
You can also become our channel member and support our work. Thanks for watching.